All right, welcome back to another Transformation Friday on OpenShift Commons. Um, today we're bringing you something from um, south of the equator, um, transformation stories, adoption adventures um, with uh, Santiago Sinekhoff, who is um, one of my favorite people um, and a collaborator in hosting next week's OpenShift Commons gathering that's going to be all in Spanish. Today he's not going to speak in Spanish, which is really helpful for me because I stopped Spanish in high school. Um, and that's uh, that's about where it ends, and um, I won't even try. I think Ahora and um, Por Favor are about, that's that's the extent of my Spanish, Santi. It's really bad. I have a German last name and a German father, so I, I'll stick to that as my second language. But I am eternally grateful for all the work that Santi has done um, in Latin America um, as in terms of um, helping to get the commons off the ground. For the past three years, he's been the moderator and co-host and co-curator and co-conspirator, um, getting the OpenShift Commons gatherings um, up and running there. Um, he's going to be my moderator and um, translator for hosting on Monday, September 21st, um, the Latin America one, which you'll be able to see some of the, his other cohorts um, there, as well as Andrew Clay Schaefer. So we'll pop the link to that in the um, chat um, after this. But um, Santi's also been um, one of uh, what I talk about the uh, the office of the GTO here at Red Hat is the four horsemen of transformation, and um, he's sort of the horseman for Latin America uh, for espousing digital transformation, coaching people, and doing DevOps, um, um, and helping organizations understand um, how to take on digital transformation challenges. So today, I'm really psyched to have him here to share his stories. Um, and um, hopefully, even after this one, we'll have more Latin American stories because in October, we're going to kick off um, an all Spanish uh, Latin American and Spain and any other Spanish speaking country focused OpenShift Commons Hour. And Santi will be back for that as well, for sure. So I'm going to stop blathering on about how wonderful Santi is and let him tell his story. So, uh, Santiago, introduce yourself, tell us about your role, and then take us on this adoption adventure. Well, first, I'm incredibly honored and humbled by your words. Um, I'm about to cry, but I won't. Uh, I, I, I'd be happy and honored to be called the gaucho of digital transformation. Uh, <laughs> that's something I would as aspire to. Um, like Diane said, we've been working together since 2018, trying to bring this magic of community uh, to Latin America. And the help that Diane put in doing that was awesome so this this magic of red hat of feeling supported because you share a common cause uh is really like um it's happening here right now so I'm, I'm i'm incredibly grateful for your help uh diane so the idea today is to talk to you about how it was uh, what what the journey we we moved through uh beginning with nothing uh, around containers and kubernetes and an open shift in Latin America in say 2015, 2016, to the stage where we are today, where uh, open shift is also in this region, a, a key component of the continents, subcontinents digital transformation. And then I wanna talk, all, of course, from my perspective, uh, there, there's hundreds of people working on this and making this happen. But from my perspective, what the story was, what the keys to this story was, uh, what the evolving needs of the customers were and how we responded to that. And in particular, how instrumental was the OpenShift Commons into bringing, uh, to bringing uh, true advancement, true advancement in the adoption of OpenShift. So if you need to know something about me is that I have a long, uh, uh, a software consultant and architect career, and something particular about me is that I've worked with all the uh, geological ages of, of, of technology, from IBM mainframes to uh, to Linux and to Kubernetes, and in all industries and across all of Latin America. So I get a quite a good view of of how systems were done. 20 years ago, how those systems are still being done today and what the, the actual challenges in the transition in terms of mindset 
are are important and are, are, are the key ones and, and how to communicate, how to talk, how to cons reconcile the new ideas with the with the legacy ideas. Uh, you also need to know that I have a daughter and uh, I'm wearing the, my, my, my most prepared uh, T-shirt that Diane handed me in person in 2018. This is a family vacation. And she, you also need to know that my favorite movie of all time is this, uh, this jewel, Contact. And uh, if you have seen the movie and you see some kind of parallel between what I'm, the story I'm going to tell uh, today and, and the story of the movie, it's absolutely not coincidental. Okay, so here we go. Um, you know, Latin America, uh, we are very colorful, but also our relationship with the developed world is always complicated. We kind of never um, find, we kind of never define how we want to relate with the, with the developed world. If we want to be absolutely subservient or we want to be absolutely rebellious, we only know that we like soccer and we like competing with the developed world in soccer and beating the developed world. But other than that, uh, it's complicated for us in terms of, 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 of collaborating with the West, with, with, the, with the developed world. But that's not so much in science and technology. Truly, uh, throughout the history, we've, we have a culture of, of doing what we can with the resources we have uh, to uh, collaborate with the rest of the world in science and technology. So, for instance, when you're writing with a ball pen, you're writing with a Latin American invention. Uh, when you're hopefully you'll never get it, but if you get a, a coronary bypass, you're 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 receiving a, a Latin America um, uh, development. And uh, if you if you need uh, scientific proof of the effects of the lack of ozone in the in the in the northern pole, uh, you are you are you will find uh, key research done in an area from Latin Americans as well as other things related to health uh, mainly. And also in, the, in terms of technology, you will find that there are many very important uh, enterprises in the, in the digital world, um, globally and subcontinentally, uh, many of whom um, are part of the New York Stock Exchange, for instance, that are developed in, in Latin America and very proudly and with a lot of, uh, with a lot of um, of vocation of, of being a player, being players and, and collaborate with the development of digital transformation in, in the world. So that's, it should be no, no, no surprise then that down in South America, we, in, in Latin America, we've, we've, we've seen a great adoption of, of open source technologies and open shift with over 250 customers in all industries in private and, and public sector. Also that in the last five years, we've had five Inno Red Hat Innovation Awards winners and even one Red Hat Innovator uh, of the Year winner, which was Avianca in, I believe, 2016 or 2015. And, and in the last uh, Innovation Awards, we had like three finalists. So we are very, this is, this is a continent that's very connected with innovation, with the limited resources we do the very best that we can, and we are extremely passionate about uh, creating uh, new solutions and trying to solve many of our um, different uh, issues and, and, and needs in, in the continent. So um, the idea is to tell you, so I need to do a, 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 a very brief um, disclaimer here. I'm from Argentina, which is like this country south here. And um, so the story that I'm going to tell you is mostly from my perspective, because it's, I, I don't want to tell a story that, I, that I've not particularly been, been part of. But uh, you, will, you, you need to know that the same story, a very similar story, it happened all around the, the subcontinent. And we will be uh, other uh, guys from the region will be very happy to share that story. Uh, in, in following uh, talks. So this all started in, in around 2015, 2016, when we received the first edition of, of OpenShift 3. And we discovered this particular piece of magic, the idea that from a creative registry, you could very quickly uh, uh, develop and build a component that could go to production in a matter of seconds. And you could do it continually with zero interruptions from bureaucracy or manual processes. This was 
in the words of many people in the region, this was magic to us. And this is a word that customers actually use and that we internally actually use. And everyone who's been in contact with the technology, I believe, felt the same. This is magic. This is actually a spark of magic. Um, and so this was very important to us because really in Latin America, we don't really have web scale, right? We, uh, our banks have like thousands of customers, not like hundreds of millions of customers. We're, our populations tend to be too slow, uh, uh, small and, 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 our, and our digital uh, populations uh, tend, to be, tend to be small as well. So most, more important than scale, to us was this, this exactly was the, 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 the magic component that got all of us and also the, the, the customers interested in, in OpenShift. So at that time, Red Hat was a, a very respected and known company, but we really had a very little footprint in the strategic minds of the customers, right? So, so customers had a lot of rail, some application servers, whatever, but they really didn't uh, think of Red Hat as a strategic partner for digital transformation. So the Balrog here would be all the other incumbents, all the other big companies, you know, you, you know who they are, who were actually the strategic partners of our customers and with whom we needed to compete with this new way of doing things, open source DevOps, etc. Uh, and to gain mind share within our customers, and the magic that we would use to do this was the, the magic that I had uh, that I just described. And we found a lot of allies inside these organizations, mostly architecture managers, architecture directors. Um, the first guy that allowed us to do a a, a, a true proof of concept uh, in Argentina, in particular, with, uh, was uh, Martin Delia from. From, from Banco Itaú, when he really, he, he just, he couldn't see that happening very quick to adopt DevOps and all of this, but he wanted to kickstart because he believed in the magic that we were having. And, and a lot of other uh, people that, uh, inside the customers uh, thought that way. So the first stage of adoption was us going inside the customers absolutely for free and doing proof of concepts, bringing the, the PowerPoint that people love and the demos that people love into their data center and helping them migrate a small application, something that they could really see that within their data center, this magic could actually work. And um, we did a lot of those and one that I'm particularly um, particularly uh, proud of is the one we did in Ministry of Modernization, where we saw, we, we told the customer the, the, the presentation, the value proposition of OpenShift, and the customer said, right, I love this, but I need to see it working. Make it work, and you have the project, and in six days, uh, we installed the, 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 the platform in, the, in their data center, and we migrated the key components of a very large and complex application and in six days, we could, we could show that application working and the guys shook our hands and said, you have the project. And it's today probably one of the largest uh, OpenShift uh, implementations in the whole of Latin America, powering the, the digital transformation of government administration in, in Argentina. So this was the, the time of doing POCs, of really showing that the technology could work in the data center and starting to create momentum uh, of adoption, but from a very early and incipient stage. So that's when the first OpenShift Commons gathering happened in Buenos Aires. We met with Diane in, the, in a Commons gathering in San Francisco, and I, I remember approaching her and and with with all all all, all like tremoring and saying, Diane, please bring this to Latam, and she said. Yes, but I don't really trust you. And then in the process uh, from, it was a couple of months that we put it together and, and, and we find magic working together. So we put together a great event. And the key to this event was that everyone that was, every customer that was from LATAM didn't really have anything mature to show and to share. So we convinced a guy uh, from Santander, uh, Spain, that they really were mature in using uh, OpenShift as a global platform to, br to come down to Buenos Aires and to explain to us how a mature OpenShift uh, operation looked like. 
And uh, we did what we we, all, uh, we Latin Americans do. We went to the expats, and this guy came uh, very coincidentally was a, was a former um, um, teammate, workmate of of mine in 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 IBM in very early years. And he happened to be Christian Roldan, the, the manager of the, the uh, of some Banco Santander's um, pass. So we go, we got to convince him to convince him with wine and and barbecue, and he came down and gave an extraordinary speech about about an hour and a half, and going into tough detail of how it really was to operate OpenShift and containers and continuous delivery and deployment at scale. And so uh, around his talk, we could then showcase all the other customers, which were basically saying, yeah, we are going into this, but these are our plans, but we, we, we're not nowhere as mature as them. We, we even had, had a panel where, where some very important customers were just saying, yeah, we're exploring this, we're working on this. But, the, but this talk was very important because it showed to people, to all these other people who were uh, timidly doing their first steps, how it was done and what was the end result of what, what, what they were starting. The other key uh, uh, action that happened was in a, in a Red Hat Summit, this guy, who to me is the Lionel Messi of digital transformation, Luis Ugina from Macquarie Bank, who happens to be a Spaniard, so he speaks Spanish, got together with the CIO of a very important bank uh, from Argentina, and he performed some magic uh, Jedi uh, mind control on this CIO. He wiped his head, and this CIO came back and said, let's go full throttle with OpenShift. And this bank is a, is a, very, is a great regional reference for, for all other banks, so after this this happened, this 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 change, I mean this this green lighting of all the OpenShift projects in this particular bank, um, all the other customers and banks, particularly, it's, uh, switch it from saying "Who are you?" to saying "I need OpenShift. Sell me whatever you, it's OpenShift. Give me ten of that." Uh, so so it was very important this connection amongst people and this this spark. The, the, the sparks happening in, in, in key minds, it's, it was very, very important for, um, for, for the adoption. So after this first common, uh, we already had a roadmap, like in the minds of the people. So we were, uh, um, we were um, habilitated, I don't know how to say it. We, were, we, we, we could establish a conversation that was like, Okay, so if you want to be like Santander, you want to be like Macquarie, you want to do all this magic that you saw, these are the steps that you need to take. And let's talk about forming a an OpenShift team. Let's talk about uh, putting something in production, then scaling by adding more applications and refining your processes and your and, and your practices of administration, of application architecture, of everything. We were able to discuss, start discussing about roadmaps of transformation but based on a final picture that customer had, uh, customers had already seen and almost touched uh, in in person in in that event so um, when the next openshift Commons came and 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 we decided to do one per year and we 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 kind of figured it out as like the like a like an agile cadence, right? And doing like our our weekly, but once a year. And so when the second OpenShift Commons uh, gathering happened, it was like the demo time of the agile process. Uh, the, 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 we were, the, the, the word that we used in the introduction was like vertigo, right? Because we were uh, f uh, like all full speed, full throttle ahead, adopting containers, doing key projects, uh, more mission critical projects and, and kickstarting all the transformation in, in many customers, about 36 in, at that time in banks and government, etc. with important key uh, transformation projects all happening uh, on the technology. So this time we did have uh, those banks that were like sitting in a chair, like saying, yeah, we, we're starting with this, coming back and telling, well, this is all we're doing, we're reimagining the 
customer interaction with the bank we are we have like hundreds of developers on the platform and we are doing like uh, code archetypes to automate the onboarding process of new development teams to the application so the, the discussion really changed into really how it's being done and and how each customer was like putting a lot of great ideas and great minds and, and great practices into the platform. So we also showcased the, 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 uh, one of the, our customers, uh, the Banco Hipotecario was very uh, generous in, in showcasing the, 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 their in-production experience with their actual home banking and their actual uh, transaction processing. So it was key to have someone who was saying, no, no we are not just doing, but we are, have already done and the, 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 this works and this doesn't doesn't break and this is this is awesome. We even got to have a CIO on stage. We actually had three of them, but but this this was a particular uh, present uh, particularly important one because he's a he's a CIO in healthcare and he explained how he was doing the digital transformation of his organization uh, through the adoption of cloud native and, and and the platform. And we also had the generosity of 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 um, of Andrew Block, who uh, I believe many of you know him. I love him. He's he's a hero to me. And he got a very important customer, Exxon Mobil, who has offices down here in Latin America, very important ones, to come and showcase some of what they were doing with a very unique use case. So the the, the second commons was like, okay, now we're full throttle. This is going somewhere, and and people were very very uh, engaged after that. So what came after this was okay customers started to to feel the heat of uh trying to do this new type of work trying to do devops trying to do pass platform as a service trying to do agile development while still dealing with old practices old structures and um uh they they started to see the effects of like not going full full digital full full devops and kind of like trying to negotiate okay the past but it's managed by the it department and the it department uses a very a traditional etl process and then the developers are not really being heard in terms of what they need and and all those kinds of issues that are absolutely natural but now that projects started to go into scale uh they they, they started to emerge and 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 the, and the customer started needing responses to that so one of the things that we did was to create like a kind of a framework to discuss these issues um we would we would present uh, it as oh, okay so the pass is now like a second heart that you need to put into a body that has place for one single heart or like a new organ that you don't even have where to put it and uh, you need to create this new organization. You need to open up your mind and say, this is a new object, a new artifact. It's a software platform that combines in the same artifact um, uh, uh, con uh, um, development uh, reusable blocks and development best practices as software with uh, delivery uh, uh, processes as software and platform services as software. So you can't really treat those like a box and you need a new team that has a software mindset for handling uh, platforms. And uh, you need to give space uh, for this team to, to, to operate. And, um, and then how, how, you, you, how is the new backlog and, and roadmap negotiations between, between development and product teams, past team, and an infra team and how uh, the past becomes a, a com convergence point for both all the innovation that comes from open source, all your policies about SecOps and, 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 and quality and all your uh, best practices and, and architectural dire directions that come from, from architecture. So um, when things started to go to scale, these were, were the type of discussions that we needed to uh, uh, be able to talk to customers and and to and to to start doing like the the, the mind changing uh, process so that the 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 so that we could uh, overcome the the barrier for growth that is adopting a lot of open shift but with old mindsets right we needed to 
create the change of mindset so that this adoption could continue to change and, and to bring value to, to the organizations that trusted in this, in this change in the first place. And the second thing that happened was that uh, I, I have a phrase that it's obviously stolen. It's, it's probably not mine, but I, I tend to tell customers that you always start transformation with, with by the technology. And then when, I'm, when you're about 30% of the way, you realize that the problem was culture all along, right? And so uh, the, the emergence of, uh, of Open Innovation Labs, particularly in, in Latin America, it was created, the, the Open Innovation Labs Latin America, uh, led by Fabio Pereira, who's a great guy, the first agilist in, in Latin America from Brazil. He's, 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 he's such a great uh, um, agility leader and thought leader. And um, we started to be able to have something from Red Hat to help the customers, not only in the technological transition, but also in the cultural transition. And we started working with them initially through the DO500 uh, training, which proved to be amazing. I mean, I did it and I was amazed and, 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 and customers did it and created a lot of positive feedback about uh, these practices and the way of working that we were uh, offering. And that brought, uh, that brought uh, space and discussion to have uh, labs residencies in Latin America, like what the guys in Brazil did with Via Varejo, which, which was very, very interesting. And also uh, what we did with some very large customers, which uh, we started with doing some DO500 for some teams, and then more teams wanted, on, wanted it in, and, and, and we did like hundreds of people train in DO500, and then uh, the, the positive feedback was so good that even senior management, like the CIO and all his 20 directors wanted to like get a taste of what we were doing. So we created like a small scale two days um, culture, executive culture workshop. And that kick started um, uh, the idea that Red Hat could help uh, these and other customers in the, in the cultural um, transformation at senior management levels, and then we've se we've since been doing that work with 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 a couple of organizations, and and started to doing at, at more and very important customers. So we had to react. I mean, as 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 that that magic turned into a spark, and that spark started to grow into a fire. We had to react with how to continue accelerating this at the scale it was it was beginning to take and, and, and it was a hell of a challenge, but, but we were able to continue responding. <clears throat> so we're very proud of that as, as an organization. And then that's, that's going to be the theme of the, of the LATAM OSCG next Monday, which is, which will have Diane for the first time you, we will have you uh, with us opening the, opening the event and, and it's very important for, 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 from us because of what you represent in the, in the connection between Red Hat uh, and, and the open source communities. But also the great Andrew Clay Schaefer uh, is gonna give an extraordinary talk. Uh, I saw some of the, the slides and stuff he talks about is like mind boggling, boggling even for a guy who does DevOps every day. So it's awesome. And then we will have an executive panel of five regional CIOs who are gonna be talking about culture, right? So they will not be talking about really like, oh, the containers and stuff. Like what our, what our, uh, what did we learn from trying to do cultural change in organizations that are extremely legacy, extremely politically complicated, uh, large and with a lot of legacy and, and share their, their experiences. And we have some very key, very important figures there. There's one of the guys who comes from Mercado Libre, from an actual digital uh, company and went into a bank, one of the most traditional banks in the country. And, and his, his clash of cultures that he embodies is, is very, very interesting to, to, to hear. And also all, all the other guys have great stories to tell. And then also we will have some great customer cases and stories. There's a digital TV system that is a service that is uh, being migrated to OpenShift. There's a bank, a whole bank transforming. Uh, we have a, an insurance company and, and, and another bank. And, and finally, a, a case that I'm very proud of, which is the, um, the, the, the digital, uh, what's, what's it called? The, 
the digital interoperability network in healthcare, in public healthcare in, in Argentina. And they did what's the dream of the digital uh, single unified uh, uh, medical history of everyone so that you go to any doctor and he can just uh, see all of your medical history and all of the treatments and all of the medication that you ever took. And um, this is a, an extraordinary project that's that's being a reference in in the world, and it's it's great to to have them and see how they evolved even in the in the COVID era, which for which this project was extremely uh, like instrumental for the response that the government had to do. So so it's 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 a great content that we will have, and 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 what what it will be as in the next stage of of evolution and adoption of of what we're doing. So what we are seeing and we, we were discussing with Diane uh, when we were preparing the, the opening for for the commons is that the, the next stage what we're seeing is this this uh, this widespread adoption of OpenShift platforms is bringing like a common uh, substrate over which to solidify common practices. And those common practices give us a common language in which, with, in which to use to collaborate amongst, not only within an organization, but within uh, many organizations, between many organizations. So what we're seeing next is the emergence of collaboration at scale, right? And again, this is a stolen idea. That's that's. Uh, I mean, uh, Andrew Clay Schaefer said, "Great ideas are stolen." So I feel like validated to to keep stealing ideas. So I will continue to do that. Uh, this this this. I, I saw it in a, in a in a in a Harvard Business Review article that said, "The era of moving fast and breaking things within one company. Yeah, it's great, but that's not the thing anymore." The thing now is to be able to orchestrate all those innovation cultures and momentum within within all organizations and to start working together so to solve the big issues and the big problems of, of society, of civil, civilization that really transcend each of us and, and, and cannot be solved by by any of us. And and like I said, the the with the with the base of everyone using open source and using technology that's curated by a meritocratic process of innovation so that everyone is using the same technology, but not because they are forced to, but because this is objectively the best technological way to go forward. Uh, this enables um, uh, common practices. This creates open communities and this finally enables this open collaboration. And um, in the region, we are starting to see these um, uh, for instance, with the with the digital interoperability network in healthcare, but that will be uh, transcending to justice. For instance, in the public sector, it will be transcending to uh, insurance, to 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 many many other areas. And um, in the other hand, in the private sector, for instance, the banks are uh, got tired of getting their 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 being beaten by 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 the fintech world so they decided to create their own fintech and working together with open apis and open banking and starting to collaborate amongst them to present a a formidable competition to the to the to the digital natives uh, that were eating their cake so um this is just beginning this collaboration at scale Uruguay with the guys from Agesic, as always, they were the first OpenShift customers in Latin America, and they are always one step ahead that they had two, two, two presentations in the previous OpenShift Commons, so you can go and check what they were doing uh, years before the, the rest. But uh, this is only beginning, but we see this is where, where everything going, and we as Red Hat are, are starting to think how we can uh, um, uh, help and catalyze that and, and help that happen that because we believe our open culture is like, is very useful for, for, for helping this uh, large scale uh, collaboration. And the idea of the OpenShift Commons, including like senior managers and everything has to do with, um, with becoming a place where organizations can come together and discuss and, and collaborate and ideate 
where to move forward in a kind of a common roadmap. So I, I, I'm absolutely like uh, amazed at, at what, have, what, what, what we've been doing here, all of us, and uh, what can we do in the future? I believe we're only just, really, we're only just starting. And I would totally agree with you, Santi. Um, I, I think one of the things um, that this is kind of a really nice showcase of, and, and thank you so much for taking the time to talk about this. And I'm so looking forward to Monday um, and hearing more stories as the uh, the open collaboration continues um, to to grow in Latin America. But I I think that what you what you sort of showcase is 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 the power of um, what I, I try and do with OpenShift Commons is peer-to-peer -peer networking. So if, if you think back to like when you were showcasing the magic and when you were, uh, when folks from Santander and uh, other companies were coming in and they were sharing their stories. And um, in the past, um, you know, even just five, six years ago, not even the distant past, People were so caught up in the competitiveness. You know, we can't tell anybody what our secret sauce is. Um, we can't tell anybody what our competitive advantage is. And now the competitive advantage really is this open collaboration, um, the sharing of stories and this building of communities of peers that um, help each other. You know, they may still have secret sauces because I know you guys have really good barbecue down there. Um, I remember that. Um, and it's it's awesome. Maybe a wee much on how much meat you make me every time I come <laughs> down there, but um, it's pretty amazing. But I, I think that the thing that's really interesting because people think of banks really historically as being really closed and not open to sharing their insights and being you know, sometimes we hear uh, and it is still true is that a lot of them have compliance and audit and risk issues that you know don't allow them to contribute directly to an open source project. But this is another layer of openness, right? So there's one side of open source, which is about, can I push my code into a, a public repo? Can I do this? Can I do that? And more and more of that's happening. We have what, what I call sort of this virtuous end user cycle that's beginning to evolve and we're seeing where now end users are, you know, like Amadeus and others and ExxonMobil and other people are being able to contribute upstream to Kubernetes and that filters down. And that's actually where we as Red Hat want them to put it. We want them to put it up there because that's where we're collaborating and building the core of OpenShift in, is in the Kubernetes and Cloud Native Foundation. But it's this beyond the code, it's the open culture, the sharing of stories and I think um, it's maybe stereotyping Latin America a little bit, but um, I think the openness with which, you know, it always amazes me, the banking industry was really for me in Latin America, the first ones to step up. Um, the government, Itao, Surpro, people like, I can remember going down um, to Foz de Gazu, I'm probably saying that wrong, for an open source conference that was hosted. Foz de Gazu is those huge um, waterfalls that if anybody sees on the tourist map, um, it's just, it's a, brilliant. But it was hosted at a government center that was generating right. power. And there was this huge open source conference there, but it was the government agencies really too in Latin America that took on um, in, and embraced what we call magic. And, and that to me was really powerful because you, that's not the same way it happened here in North America. It's, you know, it's a different, you know, different groups, different cultures, Silicon Valley, you know, startups and, you know, wonderfulness happening in California. It was a very different route to um, coming to being cloud native and being um, open. And I think that there's a sensibility in Latin America that um, really helped drive this as well. And it's gonna be interesting to see where we go on Monday um, and what's next and what we hear next. But is, is that, am I, am I stereotyping um, you guys? I mean, I really do think that's, uh, you have a, a very open culture of sharing. Well, uh, 
to be honest, uh, uh, that's that 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 was a change. I mean, um, I mean, historically, the banks wouldn't tell you what they were doing. The, the telcos never and and everything. Uh, but we and that that's what created uh, all those all those unicorns because the talent that we have, we really have a great pool, a talent pool of people, of developers, of technicians that really love their stuff. You will see a lot of uh, community, open source communities that have a lot of contributors uh, from Argentina, from, from, sorry, from Latin America in general, more, much more from Brazil probably than from Argentina, I'm very sorry. Um, but, but you have that, this personal passion, but then in the traditional organizations, particularly in, in private sector, like the, it was more dominated by by closed source, like right, like by the big the, the big vendors, Valrob that that I was putting there, and um, this created that these unicorns, this new like uh, we don't really have a Silicon Valley, but this virtual Silicon Valley that created and kick started Mercado Libre, Nubank, and Globant, and etc. They started eating the the incumbent spy. They started they won they they beat them at electronic payments, for instance. They beat them at at many things. And so um, this opened the door in these traditional organizations for these these young talent, these these the young in the mind, right? This 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 fresh talent to kind of bring these ideas to them because if they didn't do that, they would be out of business incredibly quickly. And um, and now, but the the great thing that like you say is we if we have something in Latin America, I, what I would say is we are very adaptable. We are since we live in crisis all the time. It's in our idea to to like quite react react very very quickly. And so this the same senior manager that said I don't want any open source at the five minutes later was saying open source is the way and all in. And so the change happened very rapidly. And then you had all this openness very very quickly. Um, and that was also catalyzed. I don't wanna I don't wanna like like. Um, diminish the role of this because there was nothing like an OpenShift Commons gathering present in Latin America before. So it was also catalyzed by the, uh, there, there actually being a place to do this sharing, right? In the in the in previous it would be like a branded event where you like had the CIO invited to give a generic talk about what they're doing, and this was for the technical people, for the technical community. Let's talk technology let's talk bits and bytes like we say down here and um, and that space didn't exist so at, at the at the corporate level at, at the enterprise level and this this was huge be, because of what openshift commons is again yeah uh, i cannot thank you enough for openshift commons so I, yeah and I, and I think the the role of commons you know and in creating a commons whether it's an openshift commons or any commons is creating spaces for people to share their stories um, whether in safe and healthy environments, but um, that you know that's always a key to it, and and having it be something, and, and I, I'm always on it about peer to peer, right? You know, we talk. You're Red Hat. I'm Red Hat. I'm you know, and I and I you know I love working at Red Hat. It's it's awesome. Um, you all should work there. But um, and but but I much rather hear from an end user or an upstream project lead or someone who's got. Um, you know some real interesting workload um and have them tell the story because it's that real world experience that really makes a difference there's a a talk um uh, i'm just in the th in the finishing touches of um rec recording a talk on what we are calling um an ai ml initiative that america mobile is the one which is um, a mexican company uh telco very big um i'm sure you've heard of them we've um uh, and, and, and interacted with them too, but it's um, they are spearheading with a number of other telcos this thing called the Enterprise Neurosystem Initiative, which is about using AI and ML and AI ops to on all of the enterprise data inside of companies. And I mean that is really I mean uh, truly it's you know it's doing there's some fostering going on with Red Hatters helping facilitate the initiative and get it off the ground, but it's really something that's coming out of America Mobile and they're, what they're actually already doing, right? And they're just sharing it and trying to bring more people up to speed on um, how, to, how this all works. And you find 
that sort of conversation to me is probably the most exciting thing. It is the new magic, right? So the magic, the original magic was, wow, look at this platform as a service. I can, with a couple of clicks, deploy my, I, I jokingly say, deploy my WordPress app and it will scale to, you know, handle Thanksgiving sales for, of my, whatever I'm selling, right? Like early days of platform as service, it really was magic, right? And then as containers got added to it, it became even more magical and maybe a little mystical um, as we started navigating namespaces and pods and Greek names of things like Kubernetes. So it's like, but the, the original concept was about this magical thinking, right? Um, not in a, a fantasy way, but in a way that was magical thinking that by working in the open, by working, like adding automation and DevOps into your culture um, and having the conversations between developers and operators um, start happening early days to evolve into these new roles, these new things like DevOps and um, you know, we, you, I, I heard you sort of a little disparaging ITIL and, you know, things like that. But taking those things and sharing all of that, um, what people have learned across the, their organizations internally. So, um, and I love the bit about having to do the workshop or hosting the workshop because the C-level folks, um, the executives wanted to get in on this culture thing, right? And I think... That's the other key too, is, is I always, um, I sometimes joke a little bit about when I onboard, OpenShift Commons is organizational base, right? So an organization joins and then anybody from that organization can participate in the working groups, the SIGs, the gatherings, come give a briefing. It doesn't matter. You could be the executive assistant to the CEO or a hands-on sysadmin, you can join. And that, conceptually is also a breaking of um, some of the barriers as you were describing because yeah, Red Hat forums, um, uh, hands-on hackathon workshops that we host and those things, those are, those are focused and targeted things. But what I think we're trying to do here is break some of the barriers down and create better lines of communication and sharing of stories at front, between all the levels and organizations. And, um, I don't claim to have invented this by any stretch, but I think the key, and if anyone's listening out there, is to create a commons, um, to create a space, to give away the podium to other people to speak. So it's not just red hatters talking, though that's what it is today, but um, <laughs> to really, um, to create spaces for people and organizations um, to cross pollinate, because I kind of, joke about community development today is being like three-dimensional chess, you know, those old um, class. So you've got one angle that is um, the projects and the products and the Kubernetes and all the technologies up there. And then you have another angle that's all of the end users. So what are they doing? And then there's even, a, and it's probably more than three dimensions, there's another dimension that I, I look at often that's verticals, because what you telling in those rooms where you're sharing your stories is something might click for a telco that a bank is doing that might click for someone might do a talk on gpus or on edge technology or it iot or something like that that they're doing um so it's becoming and it's also interesting because we're now focusing more and more on workloads like what is your workload on openshift because like HTML and everything else under the hood of the internet, you know, we don't look under the hood so much anymore. Now we want to make sure that the magic that is OpenShift and Kubernetes and all this cloud native wonderful service mesh technology will work and support all of these workloads. So it's really important for us at Red Hat to hear these stories, to get the feedback, to figure out things like, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, and I have to say, I've been deep in um, NVIDIA GPU um, talks, which is where that enterprise neurosystem one just came out of. Uh, and so everything has been about, you know, how can we get high performance? How can we tune our GP, uh, GPU and get on bare metal? And whether it's Dell or Intel or whomever is metal that we're running on these days. Um, so I, I, I have a lot of that in my, but the thing is, it's like maybe, um, 
the new thing now is is really focusing, and I think we'll see that Monday a bit too, is people sharing the stories about their workloads and how they've tuned the underpinnings that is what Red Hat brings um, to the table. The other Absolutely. thing, that, the other thing that's really been interesting over the, since in the past three years is the rise of um, reference architectures for, for specific workloads. So um, I don't think we have a talk on Open Data Hub on Monday, but um, Open Data Hub is a really yeah. good example of this. It's like uh, if you don't, if you don't, if you you might know me through my Twitter handle that I, I usually do all of my work stuff through, which is um, OpenShift Common. But I also have another side of the house, which is Python DJ. So I'm a longtime Python. Uh, I oh. used to love Django, and I really love Jupyter Notebooks and, and that side of the house quite a bit too. And and we've seen the evolution of like single Jupyter Notebooks to um, hosting Jupyter Hub to this whole new framework for um, building and training um, AI and machine learning models um, on top of OpenShift. And there's this reference architecture called Open Data Hub, which we're now, people have taken that reference architecture and built whole clouds on them, Mass Open Cloud, you know, Massachusetts Open Cloud, which is powering the Ch Boston Children's Hospital. All kinds of really cool stuff wow. is happening. And now that's turning into an actual productized thing. So it's like, it's mine, and it's, this is all happening in like less than three years. You know, these this whole arc. So going back to like originally at the very beginning where before we even turned the recording button on, we're talking about the origin of commons was about dealing with the fire hose of information that we had to get out to the community and to our end users and to our partners and upstream folks when we did the pivot to rebasing OpenShift on Kubernetes. That's sort of the origin story for commons, OpenShift commons, is right. that all of a sudden we had to reach everybody fast and tell them, whoa guys, 2.0 was something, but 3.0 is something new and it's really cool. <laughs> so to do this, you're gonna have to sit in this fire hose and listen to all of this conversation about pods and these Greek name things that you hadn't even thought about. Um, and and that's like four years ago, I think four, four four years ago. So, and today the fire hose is even bigger, and there's more, <laughs> right? Yeah, and and it also became like a place where ideas like could join and 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 be interconnected and and kind of made. There's this great TED talk uh, that is called "When Ideas Have Sex," where this guy from England proposes a biological model of idea reproduction and recombination that follows similar rules to, to sexual reproduction in in nature, and and he's this is this phenomenon like the OpenShift Commons is a place where ideas get get combined and produce new ideas and ideas are created, and the conversation is all about that. Okay. And if you would if you would allow me if you would allow me two minutes for this is a, a kind of an, a personal epiphany that I had one day about what really is DevOps and what really is this process that we're talking about and, and ideas mating and everything, and so. Uh, this is a this is a presentation. It's in Spanish, but it's trying to explain what DevOps is. And DevOps is this circle, this feedback loop between the digital product that users are using and the code, the version code that creates that product. And we are uh, working iteratively with all these brains, like modifying the code and then evolving the product and then receiving feedback and then evolving the product again. And then it's a cycle of evolution through code. Uh, to individual iterations of the program. I wanted to ask, do you see any other object or process in the universe that kind of looks like something like this code that creates an instance of something and then from the feedback of how that something does in life, uh, the code gets evolved? I can, I, can, I can give you an answer. And the answer is life. It works exactly the same way. So would you agree with me that it's fair to say that DevOps is doing business or things like God intended? I, I think you've got something there, definitely. And oh my God, is that messy? 
This is Messi and this is Diego Maradona, who is the actual God. And these are his angels, some other people that you will never know of, but we do. Oh, awesome. Um, now that that is quite 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 the way to end this this talk and um and i'm gonna i, I don't know how you're gonna top this on monday this is just something um <laughs> if you don't know me and santi have been having this ongoing conversation about messi leaving the team and then coming back and uh, you know the crisis that it is in argentina <laughs> so on the back side of everything so this is quite this is quite the great way to end this talk but uh yeah, I think we have um, we we have the DNA. We always talk about that at Red Hat. That open source is in our DNA. That open culture and open uh, shift is you know just a facilitator for that. So uh, that's been part of the conversation. It's allowed us to help companies and organizations like the ones that Santi has mentioned today, um, as well as it's helped Red Hat. Um, evolve as well too and we you know we eat our own dog food we do this stuff internally um it's a, that's a bad metaphor i think um <laughs> but, uh, we we definitely do live and breathe this and it is um something that is very much now i think ingrained in our culture and it's wonderful to see it becoming ingrained in the culture in the, the open source communities um in latin america um, I'm totally looking forward to um, to Monday, um, especially because Andrew Clay Schaefer is going to be talking, and somehow they managed to get his 45-minute talk to have subtitles. And um, <laughs> so it's going to be in English, but it's going to have Spanish t subtitles. And I am just waiting. I almost want to see just what the subtitles are because they're going to be like ticker tape going so fast because he talked and so conceptual so it's going to be really interesting to see that and um i think we're going to rebroadcast that next week on friday with andrew adding color commentary to it um so we'll have the event on on monday and then we'll reboot again and do a recap at the same time next week um so santi you'll have to say come come to that as well uh, next week and and make yeah, make your color commentary and, and, and give us some feedback on that. Because I, one of the exciting things about this new era that we're in, and I, and I really hope everybody who's listening to this is safe, is healthy, and um, is able to um, connect with, with us on Monday, and if not virtually in other places. But the, it's really pretty amazing how global and how this virtual new world um, and these um, lower friction um, tools that we have like live streaming or Slack or even TikTok, which I think today Oracle just bought part of or something crazy like that, if I believe what the memes were that were coming. So there's like all of these tools that we have, um, they're great, but if we don't create a space for them um, and for us to come together and share them, they're just individual tools talking to individuals and creating small threads and not um, bringing together a community. Um, so there's this, this level of where you have to be intentional about creating these spaces. And I think Santi um, and the whole team in Latin America and the, from both Red Hat and from the open source community has done, has had the best intentions have, have come to it with you know great passion and done an amazing job building the community out down in Latin America. And I can't wait till I can get on a plane again and fly down and have some um, amazing barbecue with you all again, um, and uh, maybe a Caipirinha in, in Sao Paulo or go to Chile or wherever it is and go you know. And I just hope that um, you're all safe and happy. Um, and with your families, and um, reach out and connect with us. Um, join the OpenShift Commons. It's an open community, and um, we would love to hear your stories and to have you share your stories with your peers. So, Santi, you are the best of us. Thank you very much for today. Thank you so much, Diane. All right. Take care, um, everybody. If you're listening out there in the ether or if you're watching this afterwards, um, commons, 
www.openshift.org is where you can find all of this um, and we will um, annotate this with some links to all of the past gatherings that you mentioned, Santi, thank you for that, um, as well as who was the person who was the, who you going to, the guy who talked about sex and community and that, that, that reference. He, he calls it. himself the rational optimist. Let me, if we all have right. the minutes, the rational, uh, Ridley, the name is Ridley, uh, okay. the, the, the last name. I can't remember his name. Um, dig him up but you can moments. look for the for, for the TED talk is absolutely outstanding. It's we're, we're gonna dig mind. him up and, and get him get him here and um and add him into the pantheon of people people who are coming and doing Transformation Friday talks. Um thank you for the inspiration and for all of your efforts again. So um I think that brings us to the end of the hour. Uh, I want to thank our technical producer Chris Short for all of his efforts to keep this um thread and streams going and um, we'll talk to you all again next week um, both on Monday um, at the LATAM OpenShift Commons gathering and um, on future OpenShift Commons briefings and Transformation Fridays. So take care and thanks guys.